If you'll call roll for finance. Here. And um, I want to say Miss uh, Mrs. Smith is on her way, but she's uh, uh, she has a death in her family, and so if we can all say a prayer for her her family, um, kind of a tough time. So uh, just keep her and her family in your prayers. Uh, okay, um, raise your hand if you're in the audience and you're here for an item. Okay. Which one are you here for? Thirteen oh seven. Okay. How about same one? Okay. You meant to take that item last. No, I'm just teasing. Um, okay. Perfect. Anybody else? Okay. So we'll go ahead and take thirteen oh seven twenty first. So that's good. Uh, we don't have to take it out of order. So uh, request for the mayor to enter into an agreement with Cardiac Solutions to supply AED and police vehicles and school buildings. So. Uh, from our last discussion, yeah, come on, come on Mr. forward. Mr. Chairman, I hate to interrupt you, but do we need to go ahead and adopt the minutes from the oh, last yeah. meeting? Yeah, we can do that. I, 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 I was just trying, you know, to, okay, uh, so Mr. Higginbotham, would you? I, I, I move approval of the minutes from last meeting, uh, waiving the reading. Second. Okay, so moved by Mr. Higginbotham, second. Seconded by Mr. Harden. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by the same sign. Four to zero. That passes. Okay, come on forward. So now we're on 130720. How's everyone doing tonight? Hey, Mr. Jones, how are you, sir? Yeah, doing well. Doing well. well. Lots, uh, lots happened since we met last. Um, I got with me tonight, uh, Brendan Broadhead, as well, from the fire department. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll sign. So the last time we met, we, um, I believe you had asked um, Jennifer to, Ms. Andrews, to get with me where are the 80s can be allocated uh, through emails and her talking with Brandon and working with us. Right. We've earmarked where those are going to be located. I know we're now looking at an outright purchase versus a lease option. Um, the great thing is, is that we've gotten with the fire department. Um, the fire department is going to assume the responsibility of doing all the 80 CPR training over the course of the eight years which is gonna substantially decrease um, what you probably have in front of you. So um, we're looking forward to submitting that request to you uh, ASAP. Um, I have a copy of what that would look like uh, today. And I think Brandon may wanna say a few words as well. Uh, I know we're not in the business of providing or funding the AEDs for the school system. Um, so we're going to be donating those AEDs free of charge uh, to the fire department. So we're going to work with Brandon uh, as well as others to make sure those get deployed um, at, at, at their disposal, of course. So I'll let Brandon say a few words. Okay, great. Thank you. So I just want to tell you what our current AED program is. We currently have 41 AEDs across the city. They are all the exact same brand. Um, the request for the fire department would be if we purchase additional AEDs that we stay with that brand. Logistically, that lets us keep less spare parts, less batteries, less packs. We keep everything in stock. We currently, and I have a list, I'm gonna read every one of them, but of the 41, we cover most of our city buildings and a lot of our outdoor parks. We put three AEDs on the walking trail today. Now those AEDs and the Sentinels were donated by Cardiac Solutions. Um, the Eagle Scout project put up the four by four post. That, we've been working with them since 2015, I believe, when um, Chief Bonner was the MS director. And that's the only request we have. Of course, we always want the best price for the city, but our request is that we keep with the same brand, um, same style, so we can keep those pads, batteries, and all that in stock. Um, and then I'm, other than that, I'm here to answer any questions that I can answer for you. Uh, committee or anyone have questions? I think we need, do we, do we have the update? I have it right here in front of me. Um, our current contract for the record expires 
2023, just so you know. We, we already have an existing contract with the city. Okay. And it expires 2023. That's for the 41. That is for the 41. This, this that you're doing now will be completely separate um, from the 41 that we have. Now, this includes the Sentinel program and tracking through what year did you yeah. say? Eight years. Eight years. Okay, so, so th this will be for the. Okay. This is so an additional ADs for additional years. So, whatever okay, we do I'll today to, does I'll not affect to these 41. To, okay, so let me just make sure I understand. So, we've got 60. And, and Mayor, I want to make sure you're okay with this too. Uh, you brought this to our attention. Uh, this would be 60 of the eight ED devices with an eight-year warranty. Uh, they're $11.99 each. And then the wall cabinets are in there as well. Um, survival path. What, uh, that's our management system that's for all eight that's years. That's the main, okay. That's correct. Okay. So that's recommended. Which is what the okay. and then just referred to. Okay, and then you're trading in 20 that need to be upgraded. Correct. Um, and then the 20 additional AED devices would be utilized however we feel it appropriate, whether it's the Board of Education, whether it's for Berkeley and the parks, if we right. want to put additional units yep. in the parks or wherever. It gives you a lot of latitude. Are you, are you okay with it, Mayor? Absolutely. Okay. Um, yes, definitely. That's a good idea to donate those uh, to the fire department and uh, let those let them disperse those as, as needed mayor and mr. Jones um, I think one of the questions was do we go ahead and buy them versus leasing yeah, that, them this, that's the purchase that's, that's what this is the, the purchase price is what is before us now and, what, and I'll let you read it after mr. Thames yeah it's a total it. of 127 840 quick Thank question you. I know we're trading of the 41 we currently have right we're trading out 20 of those the older models the trading that you have there that credit is coming from the, the units at the school okay well <clears throat> of the remaining older models that we have are they will they survive the these eight, eight next eight years or will they need to be decommissioned before then you're referring to the ones that the brain so referring to yeah of the, of the 41 that we have that we bought in 2015 they had an eight-year lifespan on so we still have a couple years left. So they'll go to the end of your off. contract. Yes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Now there's nothing. The manufacturer's recommendation is eight years. Right. So we actually have some that were older, way older than that when we took them out of service. But we all know how liability goes with their recommendations. Why did you look at Mr. Kendrick when you said that? Because I know he gave me an eye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Harden, do you see that? Do you have any questions? No, I I I see what what's here. Okay. Okay, and then Mr. Burgett, can you can you look and tell uh, provide any type of recommendation as to where the funding for this would 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 come from? Um, this will be probably next year's budget, right? At this order, we were talking about doing this before the end of the term. That's what I was going to ask. Okay. Um, well, and we have um, funds available with our line of credit at Bryant Bank that we could purchase these with. And I would suggest that however we do it, we purchase them, we transfer the money out of debt service to purchase them in capital projects because capital projects is where we're strapped for money and we have money in the debt service fund to, pr to pay for these. If we choose to pay for them quickly or pay for them over mm -hmm. time, the money is available in debt service more than it is in capital projects. Okay. So I, I would suggest using the credit line of credit at Bryant Bank and then using debt service to pay that back. We transfer the funds into capital projects and then pay the money back through the debt service fund. Okay. Um, so, the Mayor, the recommendation is to, to move forward with it now and, and not necessarily wait till the, the new budget. It, that, that's right? I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. Okay, yeah, our, our, our really because of our, the way we're structured as a city, uh, we, uh, we are doing very well on the debt service account. I mean, we, we have uh, uh, plenty of funds for that. Well, and Mr. Jones, I know it's not all about uh, press releases or anything like that, but 
we've had 38 lives saved so far in 2020. And I think it'd be a great time for the city council uh, as well as the finance committee to be a part of any type of release. Um, Can you say that one more time? See, we're, we're not, we're eight days from the election. Can oh, you say that one more time? Okay. <laughs> Well, whoever wants to attend, how about that? <laughs> no, that, that, that is really good. I mean, that, that is good news. And yeah. I think sometimes we, we, we do get too busy where we don't provide that. So, I mean, I think a press release would, would be great for you to talk about our commitment yeah. to uh, citizen safety. And well, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the word vendor. I like the word partnership. <clears throat> right. It's not often someone stands up here and donates 20 additional free units. And I'm doing that because such a great relationship we've had with the city of Homewood. We, we really appreciate No matter that. who's sitting here, it's right. been a great experience for us. Right. Well, we've had great feedback from, Thank you. From, from our internal people yes, sir. in working with you in that partnership. Yes, so sir. We appreciate well, that. Well, thank you all for what you do every day. Okay. Mr. Higginbotham, did you have any question after reviewing it? I don't. I understand Yes, Mr. Kenner. In order to purchase these, we have to have a letter from the Department of Public Examiners. Oh, Okay. We can't do it unless we have it. Correct. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Um, what, I just want, and I'm going to give a writer. I'll talk to him. When you do this, when you do this on the uh, motion, we'll have to get you. We'll have to amend the budget and give you the account number. So, do we need to okay. do that in two separate resolutions or one, uh, Mr. Hamilton? But we'll have to send you the um, budget. Okay. The budget. Okay. The budget. It'll be amending the budget, um, even if we're borrowing the money to. Because at the end of the day, it's going to come out of a capital line item. So we'll have to keep sending that to you uh, sometime okay. before Monday. Okay. Okay. So we'll have that prepared. Is there a motion from finance? Then? Okay. A motion to approve, and uh, we'll have uh, the, the verbiage uh, created where we'll uh, take from the line of credit uh, out of debt service uh, to to pay for these units. It's up to let's see, what's a, the amount is 127,840. I believe you have it. Is that the right number? Is that for purchase of 60? Yeah. And then you're donating 20 to the project. If yeah, if we can get the that quote over to Mr. Kendrick, he so. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. And Mr. Jones, just for my education, what is the process once, um, if we move forward tonight, if we're fortunate to move forward tonight, what's, just so that I know when you sure. meet, where, and the time, and so forth. We're not meeting on the 24th, which we normally would now the meet. Now the 31st. 31st, that's correct. So we'll have, uh, yeah, the, we'll have um, our next meeting on the 31st. Okay. With full council to okay. to approve it, and then okay. you'll well, I've been already contacted by the Homewood Star, several other newspapers, because uh, there's I think we're doing a piece on what we did today as far as our donation, so that'd be a great time. So just want to make sure that I'm here on the 31st. Yeah, will you? you, you, you yes, sir. Can okay. I email that to you, Mike? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you you can tell them that it passed four to zero to uh, finance. So we just need two more votes on council, and we'll get it get it approved okay. on the thirty first. So it looks okay. probably good. I, I I'll second it. Okay. What was that, Miss Salter? I didn't. I didn't know somebody seconded. I didn't have it written. No, I, no, yeah, Mr. Hart. I was seconded. waiting for him to. Yeah. Okay. Stop talking to uh, second. So it's been moved. Uh, Thank you, guys. By by Mr. Tame, seconded by Mr. Harden. Um, any other questions, comments? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by the same sign. That is four to zero. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Fourteen oh seven twenty. Request authorized mayor to sign a contract with Capital ATMs. Um, as you know, this is the, uh, this is a busy time in our city right now. We have a few things going on. So just if, a few. Yeah, just a few. So um, I did want to tell you though, um, uh, we did. I think the the company that we had originally brought to you, um, I don't think is interested uh, due to volume that they think we're going to have, right. and they're they're from Florence or they're not local. They're not very close locally, but we do have um, a company that Bryant Bank recommended as a vendor that sounded very promising. They do a lot of cities around here. Uh, and they are located close to here, but the, the man, the, the person to talk to is out of town on vacation. And so we haven't been able to connect. So that's why I want to see if you could carry it over to the 914 meeting. 
Okay, yeah, so we would meet, uh, the next committee meeting would be uh, on the 14th. Well, if y'all end up moving on the end when we have council on 31st, but the 7th is Labor Day, so that's why. And I think probably we would have our meeting at four or something like that. I'm not sure. Basically, whatever on. the next yeah. meeting is, but I hadn't had, but it, it sounded like, you know, you were talking about what systems they have, you know, it sounded like that was exactly right. kind okay. of more what we needed, okay. but so I hadn't we'll, had a chance to get with him and get the specifics. Okay, so if you can line that up for the 14th, uh, we'll have them come See, in. Mr. Wright, are you still going, thinking of the 14th for committee meetings next? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, in light of that, we'll carry that over for that meeting. Uh, they've never had an ATM, so this is going to be a, a good service to provide. So uh, it's not a completely time sensitive item. Uh, okay, so moving on to new business, uh, 020820, request surplus following seized vehicles. Uh, you can see Lincoln Town, Town Car and a Chevy Tahoe. And then we, we uh, requested, uh, Gordon James had some uh, additional items that we wanted to add uh, to this. Um, and I sent that out today. Uh, so we can just have one ordinance uh, to declare the surplus property. Uh, are there any questions? I know Captain Sutton couldn't be here tonight, but he, he, he did call and I believe he talked to you, Mr. Thames. And um, uh, just let me know if there are any questions but it's a tip, our typical ordinance uh, for that. And then um, if there are any questions about Gordon James, I think we have that email we can pull up that they, he had some items to add to it. Are there any questions on that? Okay, uh, do I have a motion to declare the, uh, the item surplus property from the police department and also from Gordon James? Okay, Mr. Higginbotham made the motion. Mr. Tame seconded it. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by the same sign. That passes four to zero. Zero three oh eight twenty. Request for consideration of a drainage study for Kenilworth Drive. And um, I don't know if I want to get this report or not. Mr. Cobb, I think I, uh, this looks like it's a big, big project. So are you Mr. Mom? I am. Okay. So I got a head full of a lot of information. So feel free to ask a lot of questions. I'm working on very short notice and uh, a lot can, of my, can you tell me what company you're with? Are you the re resident? I'm a resident. That lives in the impact area. Okay. Uh, and I also am a business owner. So anyway, I've been in uh, in Homewood for 37 years, and uh, I'm real familiar with what's going on uh, with the increase in the impact we're having with the flooding. So um, what we're looking at uh, is uh, the consideration for a study that uh, we have a proposal for. Uh, which I have here. I don't know if uh, I've got Brian trying to help me with a few documents. Um, if you'll look at the screen here, this is the impact area. Uh, if you're familiar with Kenilworth Drive and um, Melrose and Primrose, there's a bridge right there at Primrose and Kenilworth, uh, and that's where the line coming into the study area is. And then the street on the lower part of the screen is Melrose. So if you're familiar with that area, everybody kind of got a clue where that is. So we're having, uh, yes. 25 years ago, it wasn't a big issue. And the last 10 years has gotten worse. The last five years has gotten horrible. And now we're seeing significant flooding every time we get a, a storm. You know, it can be five minutes storm, and we're getting massive flood. We've had uh, several properties that have, uh, Hold on, Brian, on this. Um, that's just uh, one of the recent 10-minute rains we had where the entire area floods. It water's somewhere about two foot deep. It came up to about four foot deep uh, above the crown of the road and, and in all the yards. Uh, Brian, go to the next picture, please. Uh, this is part of the problem that we're trying to uh, identify and address. This area has been mapped out. This is the main storm inlets that provide relief to get the water out of, uh, 
out of these streets. Um, uh, Brian, can you back up two pictures, please? Um, the real impact area that's causing this flooding is all of Melrose, Primrose, the connector street to the north or to uphill or to the um, to the east and Ridge Road and Crest Road. I know this sounds crazy, but the, all this water is coming down in this area and it just can't handle the, the capacity. We have an infrastructure that's probably 75 years old and we just don't have a way to manage it anymore. On top of that, um, we've the uh, city of Homewood made a, a significant infrastructure improvement back in the 90s. I don't know who's familiar with it, but it was called the Griffin Creek Rest, uh, Restoration or Revitalization Project um, that uh, RAS Engineering was involved in. Uh, I was involved in it because I, I, I believe that's right, right? And it was late 90s. Yeah, and, I remember. Yeah, and part of that. Uh, work which was really good work we got Griffin Creek which is a storm drainage it's not really a creek to um, widen and deepen and fix a lot of the problem areas and in that um, in that work that was done three bridges were to be replaced only two of them got replaced mm -hmm. and the Primrose Bridge has not been replaced and it's become a choke point so now now with overdevelopment all the water's backing up there and uh, can you go back to the picture with the uh, one more? Yeah, here. So these inlets are just, just they're not designed to be able to handle what, what they were doing before. It's overdevelopment. There's too much going into it. Uh, if you look in the bottom right corner, you see a grate there. Uh, connected to that grate is a 36-inch pipe that goes into Griffin Creek. Uh, can you go to the next picture, Brian? Now that is... Uh, the grate in about a four foot vertical stack of water. So the water is getting out as fast as that pipe can handle it. The pipe's not backing up. And this is proof of this. This is while the creek in the back is at full capacity. You can go to the next picture, please. Now it's hard to see here, but if you look downstream on the left hand side, there's a concrete pad there. That's the exit point of that 36 inch pipe. Perfect, go a little bit higher. And if you can go in a little bit closer, that'd be great. So the dark part you see is the top of that pipe. The bottom part of that pipe spills right onto that concrete. And some people believe that when the creek rises, that storm drain doesn't do its job, but it does. It pulls a negative pressure on it. And it's actually sucking the water through that pipe with tremendous pressure, negative pressure. So the pipe, and this pipe is clear all the way back to that grate. Can you go back a picture, Brian? And previous picture. So you can see this is the grate um, in about four vertical feet of water. Back one more picture. And that's that bottom right corner there. That pic that's where that picture was taken. So we've, that one pipe is trying to manage all this area and it just can't handle the capacity. There's just too much water coming into the area. So, uh, is there a video, Brian? I think, you, I think, did you get the video to play? Okay, folks, that's not a creek. That's the yard in the street. That's what we're dealing with every time it rains. I've got a lot of more pictures. It's hard okay. To and, and what I wanted to tell you uh, is um, the, the procedure we're going to kind of go through here. It, Mr. Gwaltney is chair of the Public Works Committee. So his committee will, will, look, will look at this a little bit later to, to provide a recommendation. Finance is ultimately, is ultimately coming to finance for funding. So. Um, you know, we're going to have two separate recommendations. I just wanted you to be okay, aware. Fine. Well, um, you know, I'm not familiar with the procedure, but I'm uh, well, I know, I know. It, it just yeah. so happens we have finance first, and so we probably, so we're, I'm just kind of gathering this. So there might be additional information that Mr. Gwaltney or so I don't the have a copy. Committee might have too. 
I don't have a copy of this for you guys, but uh, Brian's got uh, okay, we can get it, it, and he could probably send it out to everybody. But this was the proposal from Skull Engineering, and the date on this is March 13th. Um, I think Greg checked in with them and got it. And Greg, you want to come up and kind of talk, M Mr. Mom? Who's the name of the engineering firm? Skull Engineering. Show. Show. Excuse me. Show. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, he looked at it in March, and he's um, prepared a proposal, and the proposal amount was there's two parts to this proposal. One is for the network survey, a drainage network survey, uh, which is forty two hundred dollars. And the analysis and conceptual design is twelve thousand five hundred. And of course we're all concerned about the impact of people upstream and downstream and if it has a positive effect for the for the kind of solutions that we're looking to fix some of the problems. Now kind of in a unique situation because I as a private homeowner have provided my private property to get the water out as a means to make a, another option or another another solution to try to manage this issue um, so as long as I'm living there you've got that opportunity I'm basically giving you my private property to be able to add infrastructure and a pipe to get the water out so that's something else that's part of the consideration. And in his proposal, he would look at the impact of that if it's if there's anything negative or anything positive. So short notice, that's about all the information that I have. I'm, pro I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I'd be happy to help answer them. I got tons of pictures of flooding. Um, the frequency of flooding, like I said, I've got it dated, documented with pictures and video. Okay. Um, all right, let's hear from Mr. Cobb from the city, and then we'll take questions. Okay, I had a preliminary estimate run on this. It's not been advertised or anything, but just I had one of my contractors see what's it going to cost. And he's saying it's going to be about between sixty-five and $70,000 for construction if you use an 18-inch pipe. I know we like to have a bigger pipe, but the first thing we need to do if we engage Walter Scholl, or if we're going to engage Walter Scholl, is to locate the existing utilities, make sure we can clear them. Because it is a gravity drain, so you've got water, sewer, and gas out in the street. Well, you said the gas has been moved. We believe the gas is okay. on the north side. All right, and they won't have to worry about that. But we need to find out where the existing sewer laterals are. Because when you lay pipe, you start from the bottom and go up, which means we'd start the creek and come back, and the last thing you want to do is get out to the street and then realize you've got a conflict with the utility. So we need to dig them up and find a check the depth on them, see what size pipe will clear them, and uh, go with the biggest we can get in there to fit. We initially looked at 18 because of the distance between two houses. The biggest mach uh, machine you can get in there and work with really good is a mini X. And they won't handle anything bigger than about an 18. Um, we may work something else out if we've got clearance in the street, but we really, that's the most important thing we need to know before we start a project is what's in the way. So I kind of think we need to. Uh, Bring Shoal up here next. Next, will it be in finance or in your Mr. Qualton, your meeting? Which which committee? The discussion in front of the plan would be in public works about public it, works. yes, and then to yeah. finance for funding approval. Well, then next meeting, I could get uh, Shoal to come up here in, into your committee and we could work out some details if you're interested in the project. Also, what Mr. Mom was saying about the bridges, there's actually four bridges uh, we were replaced 20 years ago. And we're going to replace that Kenilworth Bridge. It's the restrictor. But Jefferson County sewer's under there, and we couldn't clear it. Well, they were working on the super sewer, so we thought we had it. They dropped the super sewer. But if you're there when it floods, and I go over every time it floods, it comes down that creek, and when it hits that bridge, it pops out, comes around the bridge, floods the street. And in his pictures, more of the streets even flooded. But, um, of course, the, the bridge is a million dollar project and this is a tenth of that so uh, I'd love to replace the bridge at some point we're going to have to it's in uh, it's inspected every two years with the rest of our bridges but um, well, we thought Jefferson County was going to take care of it that, yes sir well if they had moved that sewer line like if we already had the bridge plan to drop it right and we had to drop it so with what we did we did the one above it and one below it we did East Linwood and we did Edgewood and the third bridge is over in West Homewood behind Buffalo Rock Plant. 
So we did get three in that year. You were probably on council at the time. And that was 20 years ago. And they cost us about 600,000 a piece then. So we know we're over a million dollars. Right, so Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Cobb. So Mr. Cobb, is the solution <coughs> to come across from Melrose Place, cross Kenilworth, and then go down and get an easement along someone's property, or is the intention to Mr. Jones go back up to Primrose? I left 14 copies of the map for you. Oh, I wanted to pass those out. Where are they? There's an aerial photo and there's of the floodplain. Floodway. Oh, they're, oh, they're right there. Okay. okay. Um, if y'all pass those around, um, it's down his, his driveway. But what he want to do is go across the street, down his driveway, take okay. two houses, and pop out in the creek. Gotcha. The reason we want to be on the far side of the road is because it floods first. Gotcha. And there's a really high crown. It's a couple, Ooh. seven it's a feet. Big, it's a big crown. And uh, so the water really starts flooding on the other side, and it's the only natural place to put the inlets. There's okay. really no place to just put it on the driveway side. Oh, I see now. There we go. So that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. As Greg was saying, the only thing that we're concerned about is the sewer line and the water mains. And several years back, they shut down one of the water mains. They went from a six to an eight, and they shut one of them down. But I believe they're fairly deep in the, in the ground. I know the sewer line is at least eight foot deep. And of course, our inlets are going to start at surface level, similar to what we have on the other one, which we should be able to clear it. Of course, it'd have to be checked. The only way to do it, using my private property, would be on the other side of the road to put the, the uh, catch basins in. Gotcha come across the road yeah mr. Cobb when we talk about an 18 inch pipe versus a 24 or 36 I mean to me I'd hate to put an 18 inch and then 10 years from now we're going man why didn't we put a 24 or 36 in there can I make a comment on that sure uh, you know I'm trying to provide a solution that brings in a kind of an entity that you don't normally see and that's somebody giving up their private land to do it um, I would want to see a 48-inch concrete pipe put in into the catch basins on the other side of the road and across the easement that's the city right-of-way and the roads. But once it gets on a private property, we can put a 36-inch uh, plastic pipe in and it can do the job and the equipment can get it in place with the amount of space that we have to do it. Okay. And there, just there's no... I mean, that's something you guys would have to consider. Yeah, I, just, I think a 36-inch pipe all the way would really help the whole community. Right. I mean, my concern is that, you know, rains get worse and worse, and all of a sudden, 10 years from now, we're thinking, man, why didn't we spend the money for the 36-inch pipe? That's all. If, if, well, as I opposed mean, to an 18-inch. I'm going to – I want a 36-inch pipe. So, I really do. Yeah. You know, there's two problems. It's just not the bridge, but what we looked at – in that area where all those storm inlets, you've got seven inlets going into a 36 inch pipe. The pipe's getting it out. The seven inlets aren't getting all the water they're receiving in. So okay. it's kind of a weak point also. So it can flood there. I've seen it both ways. That'll back up first. And then when the bridge reaches capacity and it comes out of the banks of the bridge, it just compounds everywhere. And now you've got a massive water rivers running between properties taking out fences you know they're getting into the um, in the HVAC systems and they're having to be replaced um, sure we just put a neighbor's fence in we've got it 12 inches above the ground we got a fence that's 12 inches above the ground keep so water. water can escape right. so it doesn't create a natural debris dam so it's uh, again it's a real problem uh, Mr. McCluskey. Uh, yes, um, I guess my question, and this this may be uh, directed more at if we if we if we are able to get uh, Shoal Engineering in here for the next meeting, is I guess I'm worried about something similar to what Mr. Harden said: is if, if the bridge is still going to be an issue, no matter what size pipe we put at the inlets, is I mean, are we just slapping lipstick on a pig? Are we still going to have the same issue? You don't have the issue at the bridge, but there's the pictures he show you, which is three houses up. It'll take care of that water, but it's still going to hit that bridge and come out and around it. It, comes, it hits that head wall and comes out and goes around both sides. And if you look at the creek, when it's flooded on the upstream side, you got two foot of freeboard on the downstream side because that bridge is only about four foot tall. Okay. 
It's the only one I didn't walk under when I walked the creek from Green Springs all the way to downtown. Okay. That, uh, like, like you know, the, yeah. the infrastructure has to be dealt with at some point. That sure. bridge needs to be replaced. Sure. You yeah. Know, yeah. We have immediate flooding problems. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, a hundred thousand dollars or less is a real solution. Yeah. And again, somebody's bringing private property to do it. Sure. Now we also have another opportunity to do it on private land, but it's a band-aid. It's a much smaller system, and it's really not going to be able to handle as much capacity. Okay. And it's even cheaper, uh, but. I think this is a reasonable number to deal with a really growing problem with infrastructure. Yeah, no, no question. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I would certainly, I know Greg mentioned it earlier, talking about at least having Shoal come out here and. And right, and and we're close to budget time. And I mean, <clears throat> let the mayor come up and, and talk through this. This might be in, in next year's budget for, for capital expenditures. I'm not sure, but mayor, if you can come address. <clears throat> So you, you read my mind. I, <laughs> I, I was going to say that I'm, I'm happy to um, uh, I'm happy to include something from Shoal in Engineering in there. I, I think it's important because um, I don't know if you picked up on it, but I, I do think it's important for us as a city, whatever you decide to do there, that we know what effects are going to be on other homes around there. Correct me if I'm wrong, Greg. Now that's. I think this area that we're talking about, we're, we're talking about working in a floodplain. Flood floodway. Floodway. Flood yeah. Which, which, which there's a big difference in that. So, so, yeah, so a floodway. So um, I, I really do think we need to get Shoal in to, to look and see, see if what has been proposed will work. have no reason to believe it's not, but I'm not an engineer. Um, but I, I think what Greg said was important and I've been out there with Philip and I've, I've seen it and we're doing some other things too that hopefully will will help a little bit but it's certainly not going to solve the overall problem just with some grading and some concrete that's in some pipes already um, that it'll, it'll help some but it won't fix the problem is it are we showing here that there are some houses that have built been built in the floodway yeah, which is which is today you could never do that. Um, no, I mean, there before we were in the flood, before we were in the program, we didn't get a flood program until about '98. And the last flood update, map update, that was a flood. Mm -hmm. That was flood, flood zone. Now it's flood water. So it's changing. It's a, it's all about the FEMA maps and doing yeah, those Clomars and Lomars. Yeah, but. We're expecting a new one just any minute. And of course, they told me that a year ago. You know, the past preliminary ready to put out. I don't know what's happened to FEMA. But and I'm confident when it comes out, it's going to be bigger. It's not going to be, it'll, it'll be different. The wow. more people will be impacted by it. It's just the nature okay. of how they update maps. No question. Yes, sir. Mr. Wright. Uh, Mr. Keener, I'm going to have a silly question here, but um, our private owner here who has apparently, I don't know, donated this property, I mean, we haven't a governing easement that's going to be permanent regardless whether he moves or not. We would. Okay. Okay. I got a question for Mr. Thank Peter. you. Um, our subdivision is ready to say we use concrete pipe, not plastic. Yeah, I, I, I and, had some new question about using plastic pipe. Well, I thought I had that, and I had that discussion. The reason being is if it's a part of our drainage system, I'm not sure. Right okay. Then we need right, to go concrete. It's just difficult to put a machine that big in between those houses. A machine big enough to take a 30 inch piece of pipe. That takes a, a big machine. The maniac's won't pick it up. Okay. And Mrs. Smith is here for the record. You've been here for a while, so I apologize for that. Um, so, Mr. Chair, whatever your pleasure is, just just know I, I think on the 31st is when we present yeah. the budget on top of everything else that's going on. So, um, we can get that included if that's that's the way you choose to go yeah I, I feel like that that would be good Thank um, you. okay so from the finance standpoint I guess um, we will carry it over pending you know what public works and uh, and then shoal engineering comes in with with the expectation that this will be part of our our budget for next year uh, to look at to look at that uh, and then so that'll be formulated in the month of September 
and then uh, voted on before the end of the month of September to be enacted in October when the new fiscal year starts. Yes, Mr. Gwaltney. I've not looked at it in quite a while. Um, Go ahead and start on the engineer. Do you know Robert? We had it when I we had it when I looked at it. Sir, where come from? Oh, there's Robert. I don't want to look over. Okay, I know when that whenever I sent that to show, we had the money at that time, but uh, I've not looked at it in the budget unless Mr. Pugh's got it on top of his head. Uh, but we'll just let Robert look at it, see what we can do. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a good a, a good plan. You've got the estimates uh, from Shoal. Do you have that? You have you have that. I had the estimate from the contractor, and Shoal brought us a contract, uh, and we we hadn't done anything. We've got it, but I, we need to sit down and with them at the next meeting and, and make sure exactly what we're doing. I want to ask him a question about the pipe sizes. I mean. To put a 30 down between those houses is going to be a pretty neat trick. We may have to work backwards because you can't spin your backhoe around when you're between the houses and you've got to, uh, no, <laughs> um, you've got, you got to get your materials out, your dirt out and your stone back in. Then we got to rip the driveway out, put the driveway back. Wow. There's a lot to it. Right. You know, with the driveway, you know, no, not a problem to rip that out and put it back, but just to turn a machine around in between those buildings, I don't want to be buying any houses. Okay. That's why I was suggesting the plastic pipe. I mean, it's not it, the it's on private property. It's well, we just have to make sure that we, we can do that. We might not be able right. to do that suggest. legally. It, it solves a lot of problems to get that 36 inch or, you know, bigger pipe in and try to work with that. You know, I'm trying to find a solution as well. Well, I understand. And, you know, I'm willing to work with that. Sure. If we can get rid of the flooding. You sure. know, the flooding's not going away. And it's getting worse. Right. Today. Right. Um, and I'll make one other quick comment just for, as you, we think about, you know, the council and uh, that, that council in 96, it was interesting because they wanted to do everything underground. That that was kind of the mission, as you remember, Mr. Cobb. Um, you told them the county was doing a super sewer. Yeah, and and so the Homewood City Council focused almost 95% of the efforts on working underground, and then we realized at the end of the term, the constituents are never going to see this, but it's very important to do. It's not as exciting as a new pool like Berkeley brought and a Central Park. I mean, all these wonderful things, but the infrastructure has to be handled. Uh, and and it, it's unfortunately, it's just not an exciting thing for constituents, but it is important. And it was during that time, I remember. And I'm glad we did it. We, we didn't do enough, obviously, <laughs> but um, there's always going to be room for improvement. So um, if we can, uh, we can carry this over and then um, and then act on the 31st or we we can wait for Robert to get back and uh, you know come up with some type of go ahead and do you have that uh, yes sir. there's currently uh, $61,063 okay. all right okay so that's so you have that funding in your in your budget so your recommendation would be to go ahead and, and it, it well not until we bring Shoal in here on the next meeting and, and okay make sure that we've got this right that we have the scope and what right. I, I think I would like to do on that contract is um, before it moves forward is locate those utilities i gotta know where they are okay I, I, you just don't want to lay 200 feet of pipe in the ground and find out oops right right okay so your thought mm -hmm. we, your recommendations carried over till we get shoal in here for public and then, works and the first thing we do is find the elevation of all those pipes to make sure we can clear them because they're going to be in different places so you got to be able to get between them somewhere got it okay okay sure Uh, 
this item uh, 0308, <coughs> it's only in the science and we had the public work as well. Next. Yeah, microphone. Okay. Add it to the Okay. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, okay. Any other comments? Any questions? I appreciate you bringing this to our attention. Um, and uh, obviously it's something we take seriously and we, we need to, we need to handle. Uh, we just need to do it in the correct fashion and, and scope it correctly uh, so that we're uh, doing that right. Any other questions? I was going to say, Mr. Cobb, by the time we get back here on the 31st, if we could be to the uh, on a level to say, let's move forward on this. I mean, time's a little bit of essence on this, and that means getting the utilities and getting the shoal guy here, I guess. Is that, is that, you see any issues with that? No, sir. Actually, the best time to lay pipe is about October when it's dry. I always think there's a lot of rain in October, but okay. Okay. I appreciate you. No, we've had a ton of rain to a ton of rain this year. It, it doesn't take a 10 minute rain to do it. Five minute rain. A hard five minute rain will flood, flood the street. Okay, and, and to be clear, the, there's not going to be another committee meeting on the 31st. That's going to be the next council meeting. So, oh, wait a okay. so the next committee meeting is really going to be September 14th. Really? Uh, hmm. Unless we call a special call, um, and, and we can certainly do can certainly do that, but I want to just. If we, if we have the money in the line item now for the engineering portion, couldn't we just move it out to council on the very first show and come and speak to us then, and assuming what they tell us is what we expect, we can go ahead and prove it? That, that's fine with me. Yeah, I, I think, I think that's out, a bit, uh, I, I agree with that. I mean, that way. Move it out with that recommendation, and that'll give you yeah. two weeks to, to meet with them and, and come up with a plan. How's that sound? That sounds good. They've already been out to the site once. With our Mark, okay. I had Mark Simpson out there, and Mr. Mullins out there, too. Uh, so we've walked through it. They're familiar with it. So we know what's in the way, okay. except okay. for the utilities. <laughs> okay. Mr. Wright. Um, I just... I just feel we would be remiss if we didn't just pause to uh, thank Mr. Mom. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, okay, so <laughs> was that your motion to. to okay, I second it. Uh, so, Mr. Thames is sending out without recommendation pending the meeting uh, with Shoal for On the third first. Uh, and that'll be reported out to full council. And then we'll we'll bring the recommendation on the floor that night, and any questions that uh, that that'll occur then. Uh, so, yes. Okay. So as I heard that, that was moved by Mr. Thames and seconded by Mr. Harden. Um, okay. Any other discussions? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed by the same sign. That's five to zero. That passes. Okay. So I don't know about the, I, I don't know if we need to do that to public works or not, but hopefully this will get taken care of in, in council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 040820, consider amendments to the FY. 1920 budgets. Uh, we're going to carry that over. We're going to add more to that. So we're going to do that in one. Um, one item in September. We're going to carry that over without objection. 050820, consideration of resolution to adopt transportation plan pursuant to Rebuild Alabama Act. This relates to the 10 cent gas tax. Uh, and typically, uh, Mr. Squires, we, under that, we, we just present our paving plan and what we're going to be doing. So, that's a standard resolution uh, to to adopt that plan that pursuant to that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve the resolution to adopt the transportation plan pursuant to the Rebuild Alabama Act pending uh, the information that Mr. Squires provides with our paving plan? 
Okay, moved by Mr. F Mrs. Smith and seconded by Mr. Higginbotham. Okay. Any questions for I have Mr. One question. Squires? Yeah. Mr. Squires, so we're still following our same paving plan we adopted. Things working like a charm, huh? Yeah. In, in theory, it's working. It's just we just can't get these utilities out of the way. I got you. Thank you. Yeah, third got party. You. Yeah, I just wanted to check on it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed by the same sign. That's five to zero for that resolution passing. And 060820, request for consideration to add streetlight at Point Sienna, Hermosa. Uh, Ms. Andrus uh, brought this to, to us, and uh, Randy had, had scoped this out, but he did not scope out a decorative light. So he did. You, have we got anything back from Randy, or does he said no, he needed he asked, a little bit more time? He asked us to carry it over, and, and um, I, that was partly my fault. I met with the homeowner yesterday. Um, and when she showed me the location of where she wanted the light to go, it's right at the entryway to the neighborhood and it really needs a decorative light because it's right when you come under Highway 280 and um, it's, so, it's such a nice open space right there and it's the entryway to our city and it's the entryway to Hollywood and I just think it needs a decorative light. So. And I, I, I actually met with her also, <laughs> um, got a chance to meet her and she's pretty passionate about that. One of the things I thought about though, is that is the city of Birmingham on the other side of that sidewalk, I think. Somewhere the city yeah. of Birmingham starts as we go underneath that bridge. So we need to make sure we're in the city of Homewood, I would think. They, they will, yeah. We'll make sure. Okay. Did you have something? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, Mr. There's, McCluskey. Well, and I just wanted to point out that this is also in the Public Safety Committee, and I did speak with Randy today, and he said that he was good with adding the street light at uh, Poinciana Hermosa, but I don't know that he, he didn't mention anything on here about a decorative light versus another. So I don't, I, I can't say. Yeah, he, that did, that's he what just he needed meant, to rescope it for that. And in, in <clears throat> light of where, sorry, sorry for the pun, in light of where it is. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so he's going to come back and provide that. I mean, we can certainly send it out no, with that recommendation if we want to do that, uh, pending that, because uh, I. I've looked where that is. It, it, it is a gateway kind of to to Hollywood. Okay. So it is, and the light that it's replacing was back behind her house, like you up against Highway 280, like you said, now that right away. Okay. Um, and so she's yeah. she's asking for it. It, it. it would be more effective if it moved up. And the, and the light that it's replacing, no one's owned it of late, and so it hasn't been working. There hasn't been a light there at all. Okay. So. And it's pitch it black. Is. It's pitch black right there. It, okay. Yeah. Is this I underground? Just want to make sure that the underground power, Mr. Hambley's. Uh, where it is right now, it's not underground power. I think it's on a power pole, but it's back, like. Well, I, I did my just my point is, if we go decorative, it's going to have to go underground. It's yeah, it'll have to go underground. So there's we need to have Randy cost that for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sure. I guess we do need sure to it carry is. it over for for yeah. him to look at it. Okay, okay, um, that is all. Um, <laughs> that was a lot. So uh, we are adjourned. Sorry, I went long. <coughs> An hour. <coughs>
drawing to add between the section of uh, Lakeshore and Broadway of an added walking slash bike lane. Um, Clark just informed me that that the uh, drawing actually was on the, they did it on the wrong side. So we'll get that. I will send that to all of you. Um, but what we'll do is it'll be a, a ad alternate when we get ready to go out to bid and see what the cost is compared to the the other couple that we've got on there as well. But if all of you remember, it's on the northbound lane between Lakeshore and Broadway right there, where that kind of area the big old grown up junipers and some of it's kind of eroded away but um on the east, on the east side uh yes yes yeah going northbound and all so uh if y'all got any questions for clark but i i'll send you once he gets them to me i'll send y'all the updated drawing of that but it'll be uh like an ad alternate when we get ready to go out to bid for that on there but clark do you want to add anything yeah. to it you go ahead good evening yeah so just just to clarify where we're talking between broadway and lakeshore i think the idea is today there's only a sidewalk on that western side so if you have a number of people from uh like the broadway edgewood area come down the path you got to cross green springs come down that sidewalk cross lakeshore go all the way to the bridge to the brown of the trail and so the goal here is as part of the greater green springs project to connect on that east side, which is a little bit easier, especially, for instance, if a family wants to travel from the neighborhood to either Lakeshore Trail or even, you know, the soccer complex, is to limit the number of crossings they're making uh, across the road. So, uh, what we are looking at, uh, one of the difficulties is the creek and it's how close it is to the edge of Green Springs. And so, the, the concept we're putting together um, it, instead of dealing with getting into the creek stream bed and the, the bank system is bringing the sidewalk out into what is the existing street um, and so it, if, if you if you think about it today there's a five foot shoulder um, so there's some extra space on the outside of the lane if you're traveling northbound on green springs so we we're gonna we're gonna utilize that um, we're also going to utilize that existing acceleration lane if you turn right from lakeshore to go on to green springs there's that kind of like uh access lane that you can get into traffic the, the idea would be to take that away and so that right turn just yields in to uh lakeshore i mean sorry to, to green springs and, and that's the access lanes on that type of road are, are pretty underutilized and, and actually i won't get into it can cause a lot of rear ends so we would remove that and then use that extra road space and move our curb out into what is the existing Green Springs Road uh, to, to put in our path. Um, we would, it would also require a full shift of an eat in about two feet into the existing median in order to fit the travel lanes. And then you have your curb and your pathway. But uh, at the end of the day, it would, we would end up with about a, uh, between an eight and 10 foot path uh, alongside the creek uh, all the way from Broadway to Lakeshore, uh, and then we would have a full signalized crossing uh, across Lakeshore. And as part of this project, we would only create a stub out um, there at the trail, that corner of Lakeshore, um, to be connected uh, later. But it, it's an opportunity within this project to get that link on that side. So hopefully right. that made sense without a drawing. <coughs> yeah. um, so just to clarify, uh, where so currently what we're discussing is not going to change anything south of lakeshore no okay so at what point is somebody going to be able to cross yeah. over there and where are they going to be that's going to be safe so yeah we'll have like a landing space on the south side of lakeshore the this is one of these cases where on the south side. you know if you okay. give a mouse a cookie you keep going <laughs> yeah, yeah um and so the our break point just in the context of the Greater Green Springs project, let's get the connection to the other side of Lakeshore, uh, to the south side, that southeast corner, um, and then a, a follow-up complementary project. We need to connect the trail to that point. Um, I hesitate to even bring it up, but I'll ask GMC if it would. It may be too late in the game, and I don't want to delay anything. But the phase two of the Greenway right. is about to let this fall. I wonder if that connection could be tacked on 
Yeah, it potentially could be an alternate to that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask that question. Yeah, the, the scope of that connection is very different from the, the portion of the work we're doing on Green Spring, so that's where that cutoff ends up. If you could okay. maybe email me any information that they yeah. would need, and I'll, yeah. I'll ask the question. Would, would the only real way to connect that side be to, I mean, there's already an access point from the road where you turn in to go towards the, the soccer park. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to essentially, well, the bridge yeah, you is, have to bridge is it. the issue, right? I, I think that the goal would be to do more direct connection, kind of angled from that corner of Lakeshore and Green Springs at the shortest distance to the trail and tie into kind of whatever that is, you know, 500 feet down from the start of the trail. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I recognize it's just an alternate. And yeah. It may not, we may not have funds to do it anyway, but yeah, I was just trying to mm -hmm. think through, well, if you're going to cross the road at some point anyway, you know, it seems like potentially a lot of work to, to do it. Sure. So, Can I ask a so question? Yeah. As we move, move north up Green Springs <clears throat> and you get to Broadway, mm -hmm. what is that going to look like? Because, you know, someone comes up, light they want to turn right and people are coming and there's a there's a potential for for an accident and hitting somebody sure. as, they, as they're moving north so at, at, at broadway and green springs today there's an existing little crosswalk stub to get to the little i call them pork chops but the little triangle um for that channelized right um that will remain um we are and the, the plans that are on the, the city website for that intersection do show um numerous crossing Im improvements for the crosswalks at that intersection uh, particularly uh, the northeast the northwest crossing and some of the conflicts that occur in that northwest corner and then we'll also be adding a crosswalk on the um, south leg of the intersection too from the southeast corner to oh we'll keep there yeah that's it Johnny on the spot back there. Um, yeah. So you'll see that the, the crosswalks, uh, the configuration becomes a little bit more uh, comfortable to cross instead of just being out in the open. But you still do have the stub going to the triangle there. Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. yeah. You just slow down, Johnny. Don't yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the stub's there now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Uh, Councilor McCluskey, did you have a uh, question? Uh, you good? Was, yep. I'm okay. Good. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions before we move on from this item? <clears throat> okay, so we'll carry over 010220. Look forward to seeing the uh, concept when it comes back. Moving on to 050720, request to address flooding concerns on Hillmore Drive, Councilor Wolverton. Our understanding, Berkeley, is we're still holding on this for right now. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. We're going to carry it over then. Okay. We'll carry over this item. And Public Works is adjourned. That was quick. You ready, Mr. Berkeley? Are you ready, uh, Mr. Kluski? I think it's P and D next, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not used to that, so uh, I apologize. I mean, it's been, it's been a while. Listen, I'll go ahead and go. It's been it's, <laughs> it's been a minute since we've had it. Are you ready, Councilor Thames? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Planning and Development Committee meeting. Mr. Thames. Uh, here. Mr. Wolverton. Here. Uh, Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Wyatt. Here. And Miss Andrus. Here. So everybody's present. You got a form. Set a record because I don't see Mr. Pugh here. The reason we uh, he's on Zoom. Oh, he is okay. Very good. Well, then let's go ahead and do 08, 08 20. Mr. Pugh, can you hear us? Hello, there he is. Okay, good. Okay, this is the uh, we've got a public hearing set August 31st. Uh, for consideration declaring a house at 2541 Central Avenue a public nuisance. Yes, um, I've given Brian a couple of photos, one's before and one's today. Um, so the, the nuisance is effectively abated. Brian, if you'll show the next. 
the next picture I sent you. So, so basically the, the house has been demolished and the lot has been, I think for the most part, cleaned up 100% when we were by yes, there on Friday. It's, that's correct. It's been cleaned up. I talked to um, Mr. Lewis this afternoon about uh, stabilizing the lot with some, um, with some hay and some seed. He said he would have someone working on that. But um, other than that, it's, it's, it's pretty clean. Sure, go ahead. Mr. Pugh, um, it's my understanding at the end of last week that there was still a lot of debris. Uh, one of the, there was a truck on the property that got flipped over and crushed, and it was still yes. sitting there at the end of last week. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That yeah, last week now? there was Council a ton called of debris in hour there. on this site Friday. That's, yeah. that's current. Yes, it, okay. it's okay. It, it's it's completely cleared off, and uh, no vehicles or debris or equipment. It, it's all gone. Okay. So the house has been in there. It has. Okay. We've already we've already advertised the public. Right. So, so we'll just have to essentially open it and close it. Is that correct? Yeah. So since we have the uh, public hearing set for the thirty first, we'll we will need to move this out to council. At which point. Uh, like Councilor Brawley said, we'll most likely open it and close it, and but um, we still need to move it out. I'll move it with that, that recommendation. Sorry. All right, motion by Councilor Andrews, second by Councilor Wyatt. Uh, no recommendation, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Zero. Thank you, Mr. Wyatt. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now the new one is named why at Pew, so <laughs> still years later being confused by that. Just don't call him Jim. Uh, sure, sure. Thank you, Mr. Pew. Uh, 160115, we'll carry that over. I, I expect we'll have some, uh, during budget, we'll have some conversations about our sidewalks. I will say that um, I met with Mr. Cobb on Lancaster today, so we're he's going to go out and draw Lancaster sometime this week. Excellent. All right, uh, 306619, we will carry over. 2309, 19, we will carry over. And then uh, we have another, I assume we're going to have committees prior to 07, 08, 20, the public hearing set on September 14th. But we'll have, we will have the applicant there at that time. In the meantime, we will carry it over and we're adjourned. Uh, before you adjourn, yep. Can we approve the minutes? Move to approve. Motion by Councilor Andrews, second by Councilor Wolverton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> and it's our proof. Thank you, uh, President elect White. <laughs> okay, Mr. McCleskey, you ready now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, public safety meeting. Um, Mr. McCleskey? Here. Mr. Thames? Here. Mr. Wolverton? Here. Mr. Wyatt? Here. Ms. Andrews? Here. All present. You got All right. Point. Everybody's here. That's good. Uh, can I get a dispense of the reading and approval of the minutes? So moved. Second. All right. From uh, Mr. Wyatt, second by Mrs. Andrews. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes five to zero. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 170620 request for consideration to form a joint task force of community and Homewood Police Department leadership to evaluate current policies concerning use of force and other related matters and make recommendations as needed. Uh, this comes from uh, Councilor Higginbotham. I will say I've got uh, I've been a part of several emails that I know Mr. Higginbotham uh, has been as well in regards to uh, the uh, uh, constituents uh, reaching out um, and the people that are that are on the task force reaching out to the mayor and his response um, there, they had to choose some times that worked for everybody uh, to try and meet. And once they got the times nailed down, which I believe they do now, it'll be a six to eight o'clock time frame. And now there he's going to throw several dates out to them to be able to meet. And as they get that worked out, as far as I know, they'll start to meet on those dates as soon as, uh, as, soon as he's been able to reach out to them. So it's moving forward. Um, I don't know exactly when that'll happen, but I know he said he'd be reaching out probably this week to confirm the actual dates now that the times are set. So, and you, I mean, if you know anything additional. Okay, perfect. So we will carry that over um, and go to new business 060820 request for consideration to add a street light at Poinciana Hermosa. 
uh, Ms. Andrus. This was the one that was talked about on the Finance Committee earlier, and um, as you well know, I, I do believe, um, I don't know whether or not, and Mr. Jones, you may be able to, to voice your opinion on this. I think that Randy would say that it would need a light no matter what, but the price is going to be the difference. So we could probably move it out of our committee and go straight to yours since that's really the only deciding factor now, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. So if I can get a motion from somebody. To move out to finance? Well, it's already on finance, so it would just be an approval from this yeah, committee. Yeah, Okay, a move to approve from Ms. Andrus. Second. Second from Mr. Wyatt. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes five to zero. And then uh, 100820 request to address traffic concerns on Virginia Drive concerning school safety. Uh, Councillor Jones. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. Th this is kind of a unique request that several of the uh, residents on, on Virginia Drive reached out and were asking it, if there's a way when school traffic is coming in in the morning for them to be able to get back to their houses without having to go um, against a, a one way you know that when the that light is blinking they're not able to get back to their to their house and so uh, they wanted maybe wanted to see if there was a way we could provide them with some type of identification that they live on virginia drive and they need to be able to get back to their houses without having to go through school traffic uh, to get back there so that that's a request it's it's kind of a unique thing i asked mr kendrick is, is it feasible he said it's feasible but we don't know in terms of <laughs> logistics as to how how we would go about it uh, the the only idea i had was just provide them you know with, with some type of item for their car that would identify that they're on the street and that they need to get back to their to their house mr Gwaldy. Could they not just use their driver's license? Well, that, that's my point is, if someone's going to pull them over and they have a decal, could they not just also produce a driver's license to say, I live on this street? Yeah, and it's what, 30 minutes in the morning or is it 45? It's not that long. Just an observation. I think it opens up the door for everyone to start driving the wrong way down the road. I mean, I, don't, I think that the first time someone doesn't see that they have a decal or something or whatever it is they have. Well, and it's already a problem um, as it is right now and that in the morning, a lot of people come down that road to drop off anyway. Um, so police are out there occasionally to, to patrol it because a lot of board one um, families walk down that street to get to the school. Anybody else? Okay, um, I will say that uh, I have, uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Jones and I, uh, being in Ward 3, have, we're the ones that, that have heard from several of these residents, and some of them have been pulled over because of that situation. There was no, there's no other easy way for them to get out because they come back from work. You know, some of them are nursing, or nurses and things like that. So they've had issues trying to get back into their house during that particular time. Um, so we were just trying to do some out-of-the-box thinking and figuring out if, if that would work. Uh, I did talk with the chief uh, this afternoon, and he said he didn't see that, foresee that being any problem as long as we had something that would be able to distinguish the fact that they lived on Virginia Drive. And again, I understand the, the complexity and, and having other people that may decide to do the same thing, um, but it was just trying to, trying to figure out a way for these people to be able to safely get back to their house and, and not have to uh, not have to deal with it but you know I, I'm certainly at the, the will of the committee on this <coughs> Mr. Higginbottom thank you Mr. Chairman I'm not, I'm on the, not on the committee but I'm just thinking about this so how many families live on Virginia Drive how many approximately um, there's probably Five on one side, seven on the other, 12? Yeah, that's what I'm about, yeah, a, like about a dozen, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so, 
Mr. Mr. Wolverton. Well, were there any specific um, suggestions that any of the residents had regarding how to be identified or? No, I mean, it, it, it honestly could be as something as easy as, you know, a sticker or a, I mean, look like a carpool line uh, plate hang, hang or down something. that comes yeah, yeah. from the rear view mirror. That's what I was I wondering. I mean, yeah, it's just something, it's, this is not something that's going to be extremely expensive or anything like that, but, you know, just, again, just trying to figure something something out to help help these people get back home. Right. The problem is not identifying this. The problem is the oncoming traffic. Sure. Identify them. Yeah. Um, sometimes you know, people are not there on one day's trip. Yeah. You really wouldn't have a one day's trip. Yeah. Which is fine. It's not a one way street going out. It's just. But they're going in. Well, they're going in, but there's a lane to go in. But when it's flashing, you're not supposed to go You're not go supposed to go. go you're not supposed lane. to go in. It's a one way street during that period. Well, no, I don't think it. Listen, people do not turn, they do not get in the left hand lane to treat it as one, one way. They, they basically, it, you've got the one lane and the right lane which lets you out at the light. They just don't want anyone turning. In, in it's just a do, so you're saying it's a do not enter at this time, which I mean, and I can, I can understand, which is, yeah. Yeah, it just says do not enter. Yeah. Which is, which essentially, yes, correct. Yeah, it, it is one way, yes. But it's yeah. not a two lane one way like that. I mean, it's a one lane one way. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm, I mean, we can, we can discuss sorry, that. Yes, Mr. Wyatt, please. I'm, I'm just getting a little, a little bit confused and trying to look the map to make better. I think which way is it one way now? Well, it's going going north towards Oxmoor. Yeah. Yeah, going you away can't. Going from away from the school. Away, away from, from the school, correct. And so what they're trying to do is, is turn off of Oxmoor on Virginia. Correct. Going towards the school so they can get home without going. Without back, having to go without through. Going down to college and coming back up. Correct. That's right. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine. yeah, they could. No, that's. They Mr. Times. They could. We may be overcomplicating this, but they could turn down the uh, St. Charles Alley. The alleyway. And uh, which lots of parents do now, dropping off their children and, and just turn on to what's that little tiny side street uh, that runs into Virginia? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I believe there's a one way where you can't go that way either. No, yeah. there's not. That's because that's the street that I managed to live on right there. The the You're talking about right behind those apartments? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Alex, Alex, Alex is looking right at it. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the alley is Virginia Broadway. Yeah. Um, just a thought, you know, um, frankly, there's lots of parents that do that right now. They, they pull down Virginia Broadway, drop the kids <laughs> off, get Palmetto, Virginia, and they leave. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm open to anything, although we have had, uh, Councilman Gwaltney and I have had lots of conversations before school was stopped mm -hmm. because there's the volume of children living on Mecca and Peerless has increased dramatically and they're all crossing right there at Virginia. So I guess I'm, I'm not real keen on doing anything to encourage more traffic at that intersection during school hours because it's, we've done some light upgrades and things like that to try and make it as safe as possible but you know if they're if they, it may not be their normal route but if they could just turn on the virginia broadway alley versus having to encumber that intersection where all the children are crossing mm -hmm. that may be a safer way to do it well and i think the second part of that is it may be as simple as working with randy on the timing of that light so it doesn't quite flash as long potentially maybe if it's really just needed from 740 or 7:45 until 8 or 8:05. I mean, that's a pretty narrow window. Yeah. And I still think you can produce your driver's license if you get pulled over and say, "I'm trying to get home." Yeah. I mean, we could do a local-only traffic sign, right? I mean, yeah, at that entrance, would that be? 
I, I, I agree with Councilor Tain. Is, uh, I don't want to have another instance like no. we had last fall where a child was yeah, yeah. almost hit by a car. Um, it's just not worth the risk. I mean, I understand it's a minor inconvenience, but for the safety of the pedestrian traffic, it's, it's, wor or it's worth it. Well, but as, as Mr. Tames pointed out, I think if, I mean, and Walter, you can certainly reach out to the ones that had the questions in regards to using that alleyway, um, whatever they, whatever it was called, the Alex Virginia State, Broadway. the Virginia Broadway alleyway to see if that would make it to where they can use that short stretch of Palmetto to get back. But they still, but, but even still, if they lived in one of the houses closer to the school, they'd still have to go down. That's, you're still, they, you'd still have to go down a one way. You're cutting out the intersection of Oxmoor right there, of Oxmoor, Oxmoor and Virginia by doing that? Correct. Most of Virginia, you're still going to go down. Yeah, but well, I just that's, that's I just got to thinking about that because there's. But it, it, to... it, is it a one way or a do not enter from Oxmoor? Mm -hmm. So, do so not if you're on Virginia, I don't think the streets. If you're already on Virginia, I don't think the streets one way. I think we're just telling you you cannot enter from Oxmoor during this period of time. In other words, if you turn off the Palmetto, you're not correct. Doing it, you're not violating any rule of the road by turning left. Correct. Palmetto. Okay. Well, I think, I think, I think there was some confusion because just like three minutes ago, I think we said it the other way around, that it essentially was a one-way. So I just, I just want to make sure we're, we're working through this, which is good. Um, and, yeah, maybe so. Randy has some recommendations on, you know, improvements. And, and sure. I, I just remember one of the residents, I don't know if it was Franco Ford or somebody, he, he got a ticket from go, go, going around the alley and then down, and he got a ticket doing that. Um, he so, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah he and he got a ticket. So there's some kind of there's a blinking light right there at Palmetto and Virginia. There's there's a blinking there there's a flashing light at right at that intersection as well. And he turned and got a ticket. So may, maybe Randy just needs to look at it. If there's not a way to do it, then you know there's not. But uh, okay. Off of Oxmoor, it just says do not enter with flashing. Yeah. Uh, so he didn't turn there. He went around the alley like you were talking about. No, and yeah, but, got, no there is one. There, you're right. right. Yeah. I don't matter. Let's see what it so you, I mean, I it, see in the back side of it. Let me see. It, 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 it says do not enter <laughs> with flashing. <laughs> so you're not. Oh, you know what? It says no left turn. And, it gives and so he tried to sneak in that way, and he got a ticket. It's a one-word street. Yes. Just like Mr. Kendrick said. <laughs> Why are we not listening to you? I really feel like we're overcomplicating <laughs> something here. <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. We we've been getting this request for a while, so we just thought we'd bring it bring it up. Well, why, why don't we why don't we do this? We'll carry it over once. I'll let Randy go out there and look at it, and if there's a way that we think we can work it, especially not not coming from Oxmoor, but coming from the palm, the alley Palmetto side, if there's a way that that's we can. A, that's fair, yeah. Okay. I, I will say that the window on this sign, the sign window is pretty large. It's set 15 to 830, 215 to 330. Can we start up? So it's, a, so it's an hour and 15 minutes both ways. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty may, maybe it's maybe it's just a, an issue of shortening that time frame like Mr. Gwaltney suggested and making it a you know a 20 minute window versus because I mean they do move through there pretty fast carpool does so I don't know we'll get miss we'll, we'll I'll, I'll talk with Mr. Hamley get him to look at it Perfect. and then uh, we'll we'll bring it back up okay thank you all right Mr. so we'll Chairman. carry 1008 20 over and with that we are adjourned <laughs> the only guy left. You ready, Miss Smith? <laughs> okay. Um, Special Issues Committee, Miss Smith. Here. Mr. Waltney. Here. Mr. Higginbotham. Here. Mr. McCluskey. Here. And Miss Andrews. Here. All present. Here. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading and approval of the So moved. Michael yes, ma'am. Second. Second by Mr. Goldman and second by Ms. Andrews. All in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.
microphone. Microphone, Barry. <coughs> microphone, oh, Barry. Oh, sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. I'm sitting between two microphones. Got it. Okay. Uh, 171015, request for consideration of noise and odor problems from Buffalo Rock and Mayfield Barbers. Um, some of you probably know that there was a uh, fish kill incident uh, on Friday. Uh, Mr. Wolverton went out. I believe JJ went out as well. I was out there. <laughs> he was out there. I got pictures. Um, and uh, David uh, Butler from uh, Cahaba River Keepers also was out there. Um, he sent me additional pictures, which I forwarded on to Buffalo Rock. Um, David said, uh, unfortunately, he can only trace it back so far because once you get to a certain point, all the pipes go underground. And so it's hard to determine where the discharge is coming from when it's coming from pipes that are under the ground and you can't follow them all the way through. So he has ideas, but hmm? yeah, I think Adam and the health department were both out there um, as well. So um, I don't know if we'll get any more information on that or not, but um, hopefully so. Um, and so, so, mm -hmm. so basically we have a, a fish kill of some type. Yes. But we just it was a lot of fish. We cannot pinpoint we can't attribution pinpoint to anyone. Not not as of yet. Um, perhaps perhaps Adam and um, the health department might be able to do more to determine that by because I think they, they actually took some samples. they did they took okay. some samples and I think they collected fish actually. They did. Yeah, they um, did. And took them back. So um, we'll see what that result is. And of course, um, odor continues to be a problem. Um, Mike and I did have um, um, a productive meeting with um, Steve Ammons. Thank you, Jennifer, for setting that up. And, um, and uh, David Denard from Jeff Kosur. And uh, David uh, proposed doing, so, like we did before, doing some steady and consistent monitoring of um, several of the areas over there um, to see if we can kind of hone in on um, some of what is causing the odors, the different, I don't know, all the scientific terms, the chlorides and the blah, 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 blah sulfur, whatever. Um, so he is, he, we're working on getting that going, and I think that would at least maybe give us some more, if nothing else, some more data um, that we can that we can depend on. So um, continues to be a problem. So we keep working on it. You know, I'm um, asking Chairman, Chairwoman Smith, yeah. what is the status of the gentleman that we were talking about um, locally that we were going to hire? Or um, the guy, the the um, Ron Thompson? Yes, he is. He is on. He is. We we approved the contract in here, um, and he we supplied uh, Mike supplied him with a ton of the data that we had collected from um, some of our previous one of our previous um, uh, consultants. He has a lot of data. He has all the, um, I basically made a spreadsheet of all the um, complaints that I'd gotten over the last five years. Um, we also had some stuff um, that some other people supplied him with and then all the data from our consultant from Huntsville. So he has a lot of information. They're sort of sifting through it. They did meet me out there um, when the discharge happened that one time. Um, I don't think they, they weren't on site for the fish kill, but again, that wasn't really hard to determine until we know a little bit more about maybe what caused that. It's hard to leave them in. But anyway, and I believe, uh, Mike, you have to correct me. I can't remember because David Denard mentioned maybe possibly having him help them. He's supposed to get a test. Yeah. He's working as far as I know. Yeah, he is. And David Denard said that in the context of this possible monitoring, yeah, that he was going to that he was going to get in touch with him as well. So. Okay, so we'll carry that over and it will continue to be on the agenda. Uh, 170220 uh, request to address trash pickup concerns and requirements for downtown business properties. Tim Hanses, Mr. Wright. Berkeley's supposed to have this completed for me, but he doesn't have it done yet. So we're gonna have to carry, carry this over. over for an extended period of time until he can- Do we need to table his, it? Get his job done. No, I, I, I would- You wanna keep it on the agenda? Yeah, okay. we're, we're, we are getting some information from other jurisdictions, and I assume we're going to come forth with some type of proposal. So, okay. Uh, All right. Well, we'll continue to carry it over then. 
Uh, 030620 request for permission to place tables on the city sidewalk at 2801 18th Street South for the Maple Street Business Biscuit Company. Um, we had already decided that we needed to carry this over until the construction is done so that we can see how all that is going to shake out before we um, agree to put tables in the middle of the sidewalk. Um, Andy, do you want to, should we table this until, I mean, because it's not going to, that construction's not going to be over like imminently it's not it. but I think we could probably assess it once the that that island is constructed which okay. is probably 75 percent complete okay so yeah, maybe I worth having a discussion yeah so the reason it was delayed contrary to popular belief was because the uh, Verizon subcontractors were having some issues with I believe um, their boring depth so there, there's a handhole in the corner that has now been placed okay uh, and they have resumed um, work in that area Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, Facebook can't engineer everything, I guess. <laughs> my keyboard can only do so Ms. much. Ms. Uh, Smith, my yes. I happen to meet there. <laughs> on, Hold on. I, I meet there on Fridays, and the manager is really anxious <laughs> to get that done. Yeah, I mean, just, I just it's a, it's. He left. It's now a woman that's running the place, and she's. She said, you know, we thought this was going to take six weeks, and we went ahead and opened up, and now here we are. Uh, well, but well, anyway. I'll make the... I'd like to tell her that, please, please remind her that it is, in fact, a utility. Right. It is holding that one little part up. Yeah. Well, and... The uh, Verizon is boring uh, fiber, is that correct? Yeah, yeah sure it's their are, connected communities the thing. Project. Yeah. Okay. But I also add that they opened their business without the previous business even having a landing out there, so they, it should have been an existing condition that they were familiar with. Okay. All right. So carry it over and we'll get to that hopefully soon. Okay. Uh, new business 010820 requested to clear a dead tree at 28 Edge Hill Road at Public Nuisance, Ms. Andrus. Yes. Mr. Pugh is on Zoom. Okay. Mr. Pugh, can you hear us? Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yep. We can. Um, okay. Great. You want to tell us a little bit about what this is? Sure, absolutely. The, the tree um, is dead and it's approved for removal. The, the problem is um, no one knows how to get in touch with anyone uh, taking responsibility for this property at 28 Edge Hill. It was the old um, Mr. Peebles property and uh, it was condemned uh, a couple of years back. We tore the house down, but uh, since then Frankly, no one's come forward to take any responsibility for the property. Okay, but, um, but so the, the tree is actually on private property then? Yes, that's the endangering issue. endangering their neighbor? Yeah, but it can't, that's not a public. I was about to say, that's not a public nuisance. But isn't that Johnny People's estate property? We tore that yes, out. sir, it is. It's in a public litigation yes, going on in public court. And you can't get in touch with it. About 10 lawyers are we, I mean, but if, if something's on private property, that's not a public nuisance. That's the opposite of a public a nuisance. nuisance. That's a private nuisance. But I, I mean, I'm not saying we should address it, but we can get in touch with the lawyers. Unless they all died. It was about 10 of them. Well, if, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, if we go onto private property that's in well, litigation, that would probably not be a great idea. Time. Yeah, I mean, they, that would probably be something we'd it, have it's to. It's just not a public nuisance. It's certainly right. a public nuisance. Yeah. I'll be glad to call the lawyer. Okay. And find out. That what? litigation came up when we took the house down. You all remember? <coughs> yeah, I came remember up that. there. Yeah. I haven't spoken to him since, but I'll be glad to call and contact him. Okay. Address. Okay. Just carry it over. Um, yeah, let's carry it over and let Mike um, get in contact the with the attorneys, and then we'll see where we can get from there. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you, Mr. P. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, does anybody else have anything? All right, we are adjourned.